Tongs. These are a super important tool that blacksmiths and bladesmiths alike use every single day. The main problem I faced with them is that they are expensive to buy. If you're going to buy a pair of tongs off Etsy or other common places to find blacksmithing equipment, you can find yourself digging for about 20 to 50 bucks per tong, which can definitely get out of hand really fast, especially since normally a pair of tongs is only good for a few jobs and you need a few different types of tongs in order to properly do your job in the shop. Which is why I've made a habit of making tongs out of rebar. This is because rebar is super easy to find, super easy to forge, and it is dirt cheap. You can literally find it for free in a ton of places. So today we've got these two pieces of rebar. I'm gonna be going over how to turn these into a pair of flat bit tongs like these ones. And then I may even do some forming at the end to turn them into round stock tongs. Each piece of rebar for the tong is going to be about 15 to 16 inches, depending on your preference. You can make it bigger, you can make it shorter. It really just comes down to how long you want your pair of tongs to be. So enough talk, let's get the forge all fired up. So for this first heat, you're gonna wanna focus on flattening out the jaw. I like to get about an inch of metal flattened out for the actual grabbing bits of the tongs. When you're flattening this out, be sure to keep a lip like this for reasons you'll see in the next heat. And it's not a bad idea to have it, the metal spread on either side. So you don't want it to just be conformed to one side. You want the metal to spread out evenly like a leaf. And what I like to do with the, when I'm making tongs is whatever I do to one piece, I do to the other. When you make tongs, you make two pieces that are exactly the same. So I'm just gonna go ahead and flatten this out. For this heat, it helps to have a horn, but what you're gonna do is you want to make this a slight S. Remember to keep everything all straight and in line. That is one of the hardest parts of this heat and one of the reasons why tongs can be so annoying. And from here on out, I'll be doing the same thing on the other piece that we're working on because we're working on two sides of the tongs at the same time but I will be doing that off camera for you guys. So for this heat, we are just going to be hammering this down. Make sure to only hammer one side because you need that contrast and little lip you will get in between here by hammering. I'll show you once I'm done. So this is the little valley lip that I was talking about. You want this so then when your tongs line up, the jaws will match evenly. Another key component is keeping the jaws straight during these heats. Uh, the main way I've found to help do that is because I have an Italian style anvil and a double horned anvil, I can use this side to help keep this straight. But another great way is to just do some back and forth by going like this. And that can help straighten out your tongue jaws and keep them level. And once you've gotten to this point, you are good to let your tongs cool. I prefer to let them slowly cool because that makes it so they don't get hardened, which makes it awfully hard to drill through. And that is an option with these tongs. You can either drill the hole for the pin to put the things together, or you can drift it. I prefer to drill because that tends to be more accurate. And especially when I have some round stock that I know can be used for pinning material, it just makes my life easier. But if you don't have a drill, or if you prefer to drift, that works too. So how I prefer to size up my tongs and make sure they fit what I want, is I will take a piece of material that I'm expecting to be holding with it, in this case, rebar round stock, and I will get these things squished together until they are at the size. Then after that, I move out the piece, and I squeeze it together a little bit more. Now obviously I'll do this a little bit more accurately off camera, but that's the general gist. After that, you're probably going to want to center punch where you want your hole to be and then drill it. But before we do that, I am going to take this to the grinder off camera, clean it up. This will make sure that when the tongs are together, they rub smoothly and it just helps with a general quality test in case you can't forge things quite perfectly like me. So when it comes to pinning material, I will be using just a small bolt like this. I believe it's about a quarter inch bolt. Something slightly thicker could do good too if you have it. 
but this is just to show how you can use less expensive things to rivet instead of buying pin stock. And here we have it. I mostly just focused on keep getting this to be a flat level surface that gets flush with the other side of the tongs. And then we center punched it. Even if you go with the drifting route for the hole, I would still recommend center punching. It really helps get that accurate placement with the hole, uh, no matter what you're doing. But now we just gotta clamp this up and drill the hole. And now that the holes are drilled, I will be cutting this pin to about right here, I'm thinking. I'll fully measure it out inside the tongs uh, before I cut it, but you mostly want to keep about a quarter inch of material above where you're planning to rivet, just so then you can get some peening over action uh, to further secure the rivet in the tongs. Now to peen this over, depending on the metal you have, you can do it cold. I, however, am going to be going for the heating method just because I found that that gives me the best peen over, but you just want your pin put through like this, grab a blowtorch or something like that that you can heat the metal with independently, and get it red hot. And once you've got it nice and hot, grab your ball peen hammer if you have one, but any hammer really works, and peen it over. Even to this day, I'm not exactly the best peener, but you know, even something janky like this will work for you. At this point, it's also a good idea to try to open up the tongs a little bit. You might find that they get stuck if they do get stuck. You can always pull out your good old friend wax and just try to melt some wax in there, especially if it's still hot from the peening process. And that does a really good job at lubricating these things. And that is how you forge yourself a nice pair of flat bar tongs out of rebar. Now you can stop at this point if what you're looking for is a pair of flat bar tongs. The way that you would adjust the thickness is purely through where you rivet on these. So if you're looking for something that's more of a flat stock tong, you would definitely want to rivet these two jaws closer together. If you're looking for something to hold thicker metal like a railroad spike, you would probably maybe want to get these a little bit even further apart than these ones are. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I want to adjust these to be round stock tongs. I plan on doing that by hitting just the edge of the tong jaws. That will cause the metal to start to fold all around itself, creating a half cylinder on each side of the jaw tongs, which will make us able to hold round stock better. Here's a quick demonstration of that. And there you go, quick and easy how to shape some jaw tongs. Now obviously, these are a little bit janky. I will definitely clean them up off camera, but that gives you a general idea on some techniques on how you can shape the jaws. I chose not to shape the jaw tongs when they were separated, this time just because I wanted to make sure you guys saw how to make flat bar tongs, because those are frankly some of the more useful tongs you'll be needing. But if you are gonna plan on making Ryan jaw tongs like this, it's probably a smarter idea to shape each side of the tong while they are detached, because that just makes your life a whole lot easier with the whole riveting, and you have less chance of warping the tongs so then they don't work anymore. But with that, that is the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel for more content like this coming in the future. And if this video helps you out, please do be sure to drop a like and a comment just letting me know. This video was actually recommended by one of my viewers, so if you guys have any projects you guys want me to do, please do drop it down in the comments below. Helps me out a lot knowing what you guys want to see, and it's always fun to make a video that's been requested because I know it's going to help someone. And without further ado, I'll see you in the next one.